thank you. Thank you for attending this press conference. Um, later today, the president, who is now on his way to the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting in um, Rwanda, will announce the commission of inquiry, as he promised, into the 2020 elections. Um, the last time I spoke here, uh, there was a call by the opposition nominated commissioners at Chicum to have an internal review. And the chairperson of Chicum pointed out the uselessness of such a review, an internal review, if some of the main players were absent. And as you know now, that the CEO and several others are no longer employed by GCOM, and they're facing criminal charges. So the opposition predictably sought to to portray that to the public as though there was something that the PPP had to hide around um, the 2020 elections. And they also, the, not just the GCOM commissioner said that, but we had statements from Norton, we had a statement from the AFC, they're on all the social media programs saying, see, we want an internal review, and the PPP and everyone, uh, they're opposed to this review because there was something to hide about elections. So they had a field day in the social media on this issue. Earlier, we had promised um, immediately after the elections to have the commission of inquiry, but we thought that it would not be efficacious if that were to proceed at the same time as the criminal charges. And for the reasons that I outlined at the last um, press conference. So we, we saw some civil society members saying, oh, we should not um, really preempt what people will say and who will attempt. Um, and we had an internal review at the level of the party. And, we, and, and then, of course, the president spoke with maybe his cabinet, and he decided that we should pursue the COI at this time. The PPP has nothing to fear from such a commission of inquiry. We believe that the commission of inquiry will find that APNU, as we all know, sought to steal the elections. And this commission of inquiry shall be very uncomfortable to the same for the same people who are calling for the internal review, who have so, so boldly been calling for that. Suddenly, I think they've gone quiet because they realize that many of them would be subpoenaed to to participate in such a, a review um, in, in a COI. So Ramjatan and the others may have to tell them, tell the public and COI how the Russians helped the PPP rig the elections. And Mr. Norton will have to present his statements of poll before the COI. And you, you, you've heard all of the nonsense that we were fed with in the five months period, that all of the bench cops of the world and everyone who knew about these attempts of the PVP to rig and the Sherrod Duncans and everyone else, um, they would then get a chance to present the evidence to the COI. So we had nothing to fear. And many times this opposition they misunderstand our desire to move forward as a country 
as somehow a weakness and that we are consciously moving forward and ignoring a lot of things because we just want to remain positive and we want to move the country ahead and address the task at hand. As I said before, you know, if we are to prosecute the people for corruption on the land deals and all of the other shenanigans where ministers had companies that were in their own ministries getting contracts that they were signing the check for on behalf of the company. And we know cases like those with, with some ministers. Um, if we were to go ahead and prosecute those, then we will will never come out of the courts. So now that they wanted a review, they have mo even more than a review, a COI, but have you noticed, strangely, they have gone quiet. The same vocal people who are talking about the internal review. Secondly, um, as you know, today, um, we, we have been experiencing an unusually heavy period of rain. And uh, we have had many coastal areas and hinterland areas that have been flooded. And we have taken, made several interventions to alleviate the problems that people f are faced with. We're very conscious of the difficulties people have in their communities, with infrastructure, and with livelihoods, etc. And just today, we have seen some really horrific images coming from the hinterland, where uh, the rivers are all overflowing and flooding massive areas and communities in the hinterland. The Prime Minister is convening a meeting with the technical agencies and ministers today, and he will be speaking to the media shortly, either today or tomorrow, where the government is planning a series of interventions in these areas as much as we can do. We cannot prevent the water from the rivers rising and flooding some of these areas, but um, we're going to work on alleviating or, um, the concerns of many of the residents or helping them in, in this period. Now, let me come to the key issue what, that most of you will want to find out about, the vice interview. So now you have seen the vice interview, um, I think in some quarters there's been a disappointment given the hype that the opposition made about it for weeks before the interview came out. If you look at the, the total interview, the one that I released several months back, unedited, it was nearly two hours long. And I think dealt with even more allegations than the final product that was actually published by Vice because it was unedited and it dealt with several issues. Now, the framing of their report, their report, one could clearly see that we are vindicated um, when I spoke about us not wanting to become a geopolitical pawn. When I was pressed in their interview, that is the main two hours interview, about China and its role in Guyana and the Western Hemisphere, I made it clear that we are not going to participate in an anti-China hysteria, that we 
will look out for our country and what's best for our people, that we had extremely good relations and growing relations with the United States of America at the bilateral level, that the United States was our largest investor. Nevertheless, we will work with many others, including China. I made that clear. The reporter sought to get me embroiled in the geopolitical issues. And I made it clear we didn't, as a small country, we did not want to get up involved in that. So as you saw, the framing of the report was precisely about that at the beginning about China uh, um, growing presence in this hemisphere and about the U.S. concerns about the hemisphere. I wish, since that was the key issue where in which she framed the story at the beginning, that she would have played a part of my response to on that issue. But she did not use any of my very lengthy response on that matter because I guess that did not suit the narrative of a small country that is trying to do the best for its people without getting caught up in the geopolitical fight. So none of that was used. In fact, in the almost two hours interview that they had with me, just about a minute of it was used in the final product. But the, this country has had a chance to see the entire two hours because I made it public. I made it public. And it seems as though that Norton only watched it a couple of days ago. But I'll come to that a little bit later. So that's the first issue. Secondly, from the same report, um, you could see that a lot of information was sh shared. So clearly, the reporter in the two hours interview was not sure about how contracts were awarded, like, like the Amila Fall project, whether it was a tendered project or not. I took a, a, a while to explain to her the history of Amila and where we were at that moment. She raised issues about, I, I spoke at that, in that interview too, about China had a tiny presence in the oil and gas sector. In fact, the only Chinese presence in the oil and gas sector at this time is Sinuk which is part of the consortium of companies where they have a 25% stake. So it was my surprise when she, the report said that Sue had a stake in the oil and gas sector. But she knew clearly from that report that only Sinuk, the interview, and must have found out here that no other Chinese company local or foreign, had any stake in the oil and gas sector. Um, if you look at when I spoke about the Integrity Commission, in the main interview, she said, the Integrity Commission, is that something that already exists? That's what she asked me. This is a reporter coming in from abroad who then asked me a question like that that should have been research. And now she said, in this, they spent several weeks in Guyana. They were here for several weeks doing research on every issue under the sun, and didn't even know that an integrity commission existed in Guyana. And I had to explain that it came into being in, in the year 2000, and we've been submitting our statements 
for the Integrity Commission since then, statements of income and asset, except for three years under APNU, when the Secretariat of the Integrity Commission, not the Commission alone, was disbanded. And they collected no statements in the three years under APNU. But from 2000 to 2022, that's the only gap that we have had. She did not know about this. She asked extensively about the Amerindian, Amerindian um, our approach to indigenous people. And I spoke about that. So clearly, none of that mattered. None of it. And I would urge people to go back and look again at the document that I released. They had to come up with a narrative. And I don't blame Vice News. Vice News has, has repetitional issues globally. As we know now, they Photoshop um, Geno pictures onto uh, a genocide, a photo of genocide. They Photoshop that. But Vice News has to do a program that sells. They're into making money. And what sells globally? As I said in my interview, showing corrupt third world leaders or alternately showing China dominating the world. That is good for a US audience. So if you do a story like that, you tend to have a, a buyer of it. You can make more money without greater viewership. So I don't blame Vice for that. So they had to show that China, Guyana is up for sale and to the Chinese particularly. Although the China is not the biggest investor here. In fact, by many countries have overtaken China by far now as ma major investors in Guyana, by far, and in more sectors. And, and I pointed out, especially in the oil and gas industry. So <clears throat> the whole issue is, um, after that interview came out, they Sue issued a statement saying that he didn't say any such thing and that it, it was mis misleading what they said. I held a press conference and I said, I repeated what I said there, that they would never find any me taking a bribe because none of that has ever happened. I pointed out also several times about people leveraging access. And I said, should any evidence to the contrary emerge where I, what he issued in his statement, then I will take action thereafter. So, let us go through the program that recently came, it was here. So there are many questions that have been raised about why at home and all of this issue, and the editorials, etc. Why did that take place? So first of all, I, before I do that, I, they had this recording. So I think the, the interview with me, which they desperately sought to arrange because I was busy and I was not, didn't have time to meet with them for the interview. So they got a number of people to call me. And if I tell you who the people were, some of them are linked to the opposition too. To call me they, oh, desperately. I think they went directly to Sorama when they came here and they were filled with a lot of, I thought it was just the geopolitical thing, but then they met with a lot of local people, some from the opposition to, I believe, in these places, and they were told a lot of stuff about us. The usual APNU line, PPP is corrupt, 
Jagio is corrupt, etc. So people, people were calling me, you know, can't you see these people? Obviously, I don't know if they knew, but they knew they had to get them access to me. So eventually I agreed to the interview. It was the parliament day, and I decided to do it just downstairs in the parliament building. That's a two hours interview. So when they came to that interview, of they had this recording that was done at my home. So I think that was to verify whether I was going to lie, because I didn't know about that, that they had the recording. So they asked me, who is Subu? So I said, he's my tenant. And um, then they asked, is he your friend? So just imagine if I had said no, an acquaintance or something. Then that interview they had, I said, he's my friend. So I said, yes, he's my friend. So I don't think they got the inconsistency that they were hoped for. Then they would have played both side by side and said, Jack, they would deny this. So clearly, I said, he's a friend. And that was the, that they didn't get that inconsistency. I saw Norton saying, my demeanor on the interview was a sign of guilt. Well, Norton, if, if that was a sign of guilt, when the reporters asked him about the SOPs and he ran and jumped in the wrong vehicle, that had to be more, even worse a sign of guilt. He just ran away, or got so confused, he ran and jumped in the wrong vehicle and then clutched his, his little bag and ran out over back to another vehicle. That must have been a bigger sign of being, being guilty of lying. But anyhow, let's don't get to that, about reading demeanors and stuff like that now. So let me go back to the core issue. So that interview now, all the two hours was just designed to, to, to get me to say something inconsistent. So they, all of the charges were leveled right there, if you look at the interview, even worse than the, what came out in the final product. And I said, no, I, I don't know of any, any such thing. So what happened there with the, that day? So le, let me sue who was my tenant, as you know, and he lives next door. He had been trying to set up this meeting for days, several days. He said to me, there is someone here who is investing in his project, not a government project. In his project, he has an investor and he would like me to meet with the investor. Now, what is the, let me, let me go through that first and then I'll come back to this issue. So when he said that, I said I'm busy. So days passed. So the afternoon I went home and he came to my gate and said, the guy is leaving the following day if I can't see him. So I said, all right, when I change, have him come over for a few minutes. So that is how they got access to me. Now, as the interviewer said, the, the Vice News said, they were coming on a hotel and casino deal. That is what they came to see me about. So they, in the interview, in the, well, I didn't know they were recording me. It was more an interview in the recording. Repeatedly, which lasted about 15 to 20 minutes. They were repeatedly trying to get me, the guy was trying to get me to say I'm part of this, or if that I, whether I will be part of the the hotel and casino deal, and I kept saying, no, um, no, that's not it. I'm in government. I deal with government issues. I don't, um, that's, that's Sue's business. He deal with that stuff. 
So throughout it all, I don't get involved in business. So this is about nearly 15 minutes. You only saw a couple, maybe less than a minute of it, 30 seconds. And I'm not sure that even the, the, the two bits of stuff that I said are contiguous, that they're part of the same conversation or throughout the 15 minutes that they, they were taken in that context. Throughout the 15 minutes. So, but throughout it all, they could not get me to say, I want to be part of this arrangement. That is what the guy was pushing all along. Then suddenly, well, now I know, because I didn't know at that time what he was speaking to Su about in Chinese. He was saying to him that he wanted to offer me a bribe. And Su told him, based on, I'm going based on their interpretation. No, he will not take it. I'll collect it. Now, if you came into my, so Vice came into my house with a sole pur purpose of catching me, taking, doing, engage in something illegal and taking a bribe, or a, the service fee that they call it. And you couldn't do that when, in that moment, my most unguarded moment, because I didn't know I was being recorded. He, and the, the guy could have easily turned to me in English and say, I have some money for you, so or will you take it? So that is, that is the key issue here. As I said before, you're never going to find anything of that nature. Why would a man tell you when he comes out that he's clean? And then we'll give him more money when the oil and gas thing comes along. We'll give him big money, oil and gas or something like that. You had to know you were being scammed at that time by a, 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 somebody who was leveraging contact. So they came to my house. They tried to orchestrate Sue to bring them to my house, pressure him to bring them to my house and could not even in my house when they are secretly recording me, get me to agree to be involved in, an, in, a, in a hotel and casino deal, nor offer me a show that I took a bribe. They've done this around the world with a lot of leaders who they actually have taken money and all of that. Couldn't find that. So that was the damn squib of it all. They had access into my home secretly recorded me, and this is it. And this is about 15 minutes going on. It's not like one minute they were there for, they're sitting there chatting, I'm trying to get me to say this. Now, through the course of the conversation, they were trying to get me to also say that the casino license must be given to them exclusively. So let me go back now to how this project was done. So in November 2020, in October 2020, if you go to the newspapers, you will see that the Ministry of Tourism put out an ad for expressions of interest for people who are interested in building hotels. So that was close on November 2nd, a public process. We received about 18 applications. There was a committee that was set up, the president chairing it, because we said we wanted to move that sector quickly. Myself, Minister Onish, the president, Peter Ramsroop, Lanzan Survey, everybody, to move the process along. Of the 18, Proposals we had, 12 or so received MOUs. And since then, Sue, who had nothing to do with this on his land, put in a expression of interest through a public pro 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 um, process and had an MOU, one of the 12 that got an MOU. Now, the MOU doesn't confer any special treatment to Sue or anyone else. They get all are standard. You can get a 10 years tax holiday. Um, you get the concessions on 
mach mach machinery and equipment and everything for the hotel, tax-free concession. And if you have a hotel that is above 150 rooms and four star service, you can then get a casino license. All, anybody. And that's a standard regime for the country. He got one like that. This arrangement here was to try to get me to say he will get an exclusive thing licensed to. And I said, no, 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 the law is, I deal with government side of things. The law is that you, anybody, that is the law, 150 rooms, anyone who builds a hotel would get the same thing. So Sue did not get anything um, special there. And it was not a government project we were describing. It was his investor he wanted me to meet. And the, the investor, the so who is now the reporter, was trying to get me to say I'm part, I can be part of this deal, uh, which I said no. And then he's trying to get exclusivity from the government for the, the casino license. And I said, no, I deal with government business who deals with the other stuff. So this is the tenure of the conversation from my, from my memory. So this was the process. I don't know, as I said before, what Sue has been telling people until now. Has this been access for us? I've had the same phone in 20 something years, the same phone number in 20 odd years. In, in the party, almost thousands of people have my number. Every day they send me, well not every day, some, a lot of them send me WhatsApp messages. My number has not changed, that's it. I believe for the, a party and, a, the, a, and anyone to be effective, you have to give people access. We don't know and there are lots of people who've been leveraging this access to their own benefit. In this case, I didn't, didn't deny this guy is my friend. I didn't deny he was my friend. And I did not, uh, it was his investor. This was not government project like a Myla Fall or some other project we we're discussing. It was his investor that he wanted me to meet, his investor. And so that is how it took place at my home. And preferably, it would probably take me out somewhere else, but because I, I couldn't see them, I got home that evening and he was at my, my gate. So I can, I imagine that was the moment when this country saw me unguarded and with an international news agency trying to implicate me in a, in a corruption scandal. When I didn't know that I was being taped and they saw what, what happened. So I think it, work, it works for my, in my favor, frankly speaking, because I don't know how many politicians in the world or in APNU or AFC would have been there and trying to work out a deal with people. I don't know that because even without people, they were soliciting bribes on the APNU, soliciting the ministers and the others, soliciting. They didn't have to, to get anybody to leverage. You know how many people coming back to the point of access. Lots of people call me of all walks of life, call me to say, can you set up a meeting with someone? And, and I meet with them. I don't know what they what they're telling people. They bring friends, they bring family, etc. But for us to remain the PPP, as we are, that we, if we shut down that access, we become aloof. Now, the problem is that some people will rip off others. And other people have to be not so stupid. If somebody tells you that I can, I can get you access and you have to pay me, to pay them, verify it. You could easily verify that. So this is the whole issue there. Um, that is precisely what happened on this matter. And, and as you saw, 
uh, was vindicated. But now let's come to some inaccuracies. That is what took place there in the report. So Amila's fall, the reporter knew that there's several efforts we've made. And we've been negotiating almost seven months now on Amila. And, falls, and we can't conclude. The company tried to change the basis on which we tendered, which was a boot operation. And now they want us to go to an EPC contract. And we said, no, no, no. We did not tender on that basis. If you want to go to EPC, when if we go out and we decide to go that route, then you can retender again. But not to now tender on the basis of a boot and then get awarded an EPC contract. So we made that clear. And two months ago, they wrote us saying they can't finance it, and we made it clear to them. They can't go to get the financing for a boot. They may be able to get the financing for an EPC contra finance contract. So that is clear. The reporter flew over and said, here is this fall, and the government has just given, awarded a contract to build this hydropower, and a, a massive bribe has been paid for that to happen. That is one. Two said that in the Taiwan issue, we received a, a bribe for because, and they were vindicated because Months after the interview, they saw the 1.5 billion loan. And the loan was a bribe to reverse the decision on Taiwan. Now, first of all, I pointed out that 180 countries in the world subscribe to the One China policy, including the United States of America. She asked me, so, we established diplomatic relations with China in 1970. And since then, this country has had a one-China policy, not change. When Taiwan came here recently and their Ministry of Foreign Affairs issued them with permission that would have undermined that, we didn't have a problem with Taiwan coming here on the investment side, but not to have a diplomatic presence. And when that happened, we immediately intervened to reverse it. They said, because we got 1.5 billion, that's why we reversed it. But that was our policy all along, including the policy of the United States of America. So where did this 1.5 billion come about? And it, they had to know about it. It's, we don't have, at this point in time, a loan for 1.5 billion from China. On November of 2020, there was a letter written from finance to say we have a lot of projects and we think from China we'd, we'd be looking to try to get access to about 1.5 billion of financing. We looked to all the sources, Islamic Development Bank, the Caribbean Development Bank, the World Bank, the Inter-American Development Bank, bilateral sources everywhere. And we said, over this period, this is how much we have to raise money to get all of our plans implemented. And we would look forward to, from China, this access. So that was the letter written in November. In, in February 16th of 2021, this is the letter from finance. This is long before Vice interview and all of that. Speaking about the same thing and some of the projects that we were hoping to finance. So for example, it still had here, um, the, for example, the schooner to Parika Highway. We now have taken that off because we're gonna move to another source of financing, but we were looking to secure all the sources of financing that we had. So it's no secret that we wrote trying to secure access, but we have not concluded the loans. The, there is no loan, and it did not come about because of Taiwan. The question on Taiwan, which she said in our program, that we got bribed to reverse the decision. 
the country got a bribe of 1.5 billion for these projects. It is, it is now we are at a stage of first loan we will go for now is the bridge. So then that's concluded, then uh, we will have a loan. The first loan since we got into office from China will be for the bridge. And that has not even been concluded as at this point in time. No agreement has been signed, although the terms have been worked out as yet. So there is no 1.5 billion of, of loans. That's false. As I said before, so ha or no other Chinese company has any stake in the oil and gas industry, although she mentioned that. So there are lots of those things have, um, have surfaced that are totally inaccurate. Now, I can, maybe I should, um, I should end here just to say that on my, I've seen some calls for resignation from APNU. And of course they would be happy, APNU would be happy if I just pack up tomorrow and leave totally and we disappear here. They hope to, in fact, they were hyping this interview before it came out as this would be the end of Jack Deal and everything else. They were hoping, they were hyping it. I think they're, they're not mildly, but majorly disappointed. So I made it clear that about my financials, these are allegations so far. If we had to investigate every person on the basis of what was a clearly a ripoff of an investor from a man who says to them that he could probably get you know, some money from them and you'd have to share it with government officials. That is what they're saying we must investigate. So access, you don't have to investigate access because the guy was my friend. And so I said he had the access and I explained that, how he got the access there. So in this case, my financials are clear. I think they were hoping that Vice, given its long reach, would have found a whole range of issues with me. And since they spent six weeks in Guyana investigating, and abroad too, they have a big reach and a big uh, outfit, they would have found more. They didn't find anything because as I made it clear, the press conference afterwards, I don't have any asset, and I, guess I can say this clearly, held abroad, whether in banks or in shares or in properties. Secondly, all my assets are here in Guyana and they are declared to the Integrity Commission. All of my, the sources of income are known to the bank. Every bank that I have where my money gets paid in, every month there, they have an agreement that even with Sue tenancy agreement, I have a contract and it is with the bank. So my sources of income are accounted for. Every, my, I declared every asset here to the Integrity Commission and I don't hold assets abroad. That is as clear as daylight. So the next thing is that coming back now, to what actions I'll take. I made it clear that if what he so said in his statement was, was not accurate, then I take legal action. The people who is ripped off can take criminal action. I'm going to take repetitional action. I'm, gonna, I'm going to sue him. And I made it clear, I think it was Marcel who asked me, whether he be a tenant of mine, if, he, if I find out that he's actually said some of these things, and I said once that comes out to the contrary, no longer. And I'm looking to him to throw him out, looking for him, can't find him so far, but as soon as I find him, this will happen. 
And so that that is all I want to say now. Yes. No, the MOUs are with Go Invest, and you can find out about all 12 of the mm -hmm. MOUs. So all the hotels have that, and only when the project is starting to be finalized do they have it moves from an MOU to an investment agreement. He is not moved from an MOU to the investment agreement, where the terms of the MOU are then put into an investment agreement. Now that's his business with the government as an investor. So that's that's separate from me. But at the personal level, this is this is over. So there's a possibility that he may still be allowed to go ahead. Yeah, because because um, if he has his money and everything else, uh, that's that's for go invest. Okay. Um, the integrity commission, her not knowing that there was an integrity commission. Um, it can be chocolate to ignorance or all. So if she was here in eight to six weeks and in all her engagements, people, no one mentioned it to her, she doesn't know. Do you think that the government needs to do more work in this regard to strengthen the information and to ensure that people come to Sure. Um, but they, we always have to do that, but that was not an interest in her interest to find out they can sometimes people who come from abroad don't believe third world countries could have these things so she came in with a preconceived idea that china is taking over guyana and then sought to prove that it was doing so corruptly and so finding out about politicians submitting their statements to the integrity commission would have run contrary to that narrative so no need to research that. So that's what I think. Um, yes, let me just finish with that. The Chinese community, do you think that you may have to, that the Chinese community may have a certain perception of the government that may not necessarily be, be accurate in a representation of what is going on? If um, there were these parts of, of the interview where you saw Chinese people, the face were blurred, but they were given certain information that you're saying is contrary to the reality. Actually, if um, I think those people who said they had to think, I think the police should ask them about it. Because if they had to pay any bribe, the police should ask them about it, the ones who were saying this in the video. But I think also there is a subculture there that is, um, they fight each other a lot in some of these local groups. I can tell you now about three or four people who have been trying to contact my office. Remember, I told you this at the last press conference, who claim they have MOUs with Chinese companies. They're the local reps for the Chinese companies. And often they're competing for the same, same things. So um, they will then have fight and they, they, uh, among each other about who gets what. I've had calls to turn people away just a couple of weeks ago on another pro set of projects. They come here all the time. And, and there's a lot of locals, may, and mainly locals. They come with people and say, uh, um, can you see I have an investor from abroad? And if you don't see them, they say you're you, oh, you don't um, want to, to reach out, you're aloof now, and all of that. If you see them, you don't know what they tell people. So I think they have a subculture there that thrives on this sort of thing. But if, if there is any evidence of wrongdoing in there, and they claim they had to pay someone, then, then that's a matter for the Are police. Are you calling them to come forward? If yes, yes, they should, they should come forward. Anybody who has had to pay anybody for a service in government, then why not come forward now? Come and now state this clearly. Take it to the police. Take it to the police. That's what they should do. And including Norton and the others, because they, 
they like to operate in this, this sphere of abstract, you know, so it must be investigated, etc. Uh, we have specific things. They, they would, anyhow, let me don't get, waste my time with nothing. Okay. Yes, all right, one more yeah. question. All right, please. Thank you, Vice President. Yes. I just want you to know that you're being recorded. Yes. Okay. At this moment. <laughs> there you are. I, I saw you held a special press conference on this vice report and uh, their story they carry. When will you hold a special press conference to talk to this nation about our oil? Because you said it, the world have said it, we have, we have gotten one of the worst contracts ever in the history of mankind. And you accepted that, our president talked about that, the opposition, the whole world is talking about that. We have heard you guys keep saying about sanctity of contract. You are binding and sticking to sanctity of contract. But Mr. Vice President, there are several other ways available to this country and to your government in which this, this nation, without Touching that contract, we can, we can use to rake in billions of American dollars that has not been taken into consideration. They are just being bypassed or they are, they are being thrown on deaf ears. You care to, to elaborate or expand on that a moment? I am talking about the ring fencing provision. Just to give an example, right? I'm talking about renewal of contracts, of permits, and approving of projects one after the other by not even trying to renegotiate the tax giveaway and what else we can garner out of these projects that are being just handed out really in the end. You can't take that reason tomorrow, that's that for us. Um, so, so a lot of it, Glenn, is I know your position and your newspaper's position, and you know what we've been saying, and we've been consistent in that, what we're saying and what we're doing. So we have to also, before I come to that, also be a bit more, we have a lot of people out there who write stuff. And, and they write, they're very, some of them are very reputable. And sometimes in writing, they create misleading impressions. So I have agreed, and we said this before, that the contract is lopsided in terms of benefits to the investors versus the country. We said that. We said that we identified exactly the things that you've been sp speaking about that need changing. That is ring fencing provisions, tax, tax issues, including royalty, etc. We, we, however, differ on when we do this. We said we want to do it in a new standard agreement so any future development outside of the Starbrook block, you're saying change this one so we can do it within the Starbrook block. That's the difference here. I am not saying that, sir. All right, okay, well, let me just finish. So I've, I've seen in the newspaper recently a lot of issue about how Exxon is, is drawing down billions, hundreds of billions more, and we're getting a pittance. Now, let's, let's just talk through a bit about the formula that is now there in this lopsided contract and how it's applied to, say, the financials on a cash flow basis. That is money coming to both parties 
in a given year. The no, cash. Sorry, I haven't asked that question. No, no, no. I'm coming. I, I know I'm coming to that, but I want to share this. Sir, let yeah. me just make my question. Okay, clear. all right. Clear. All right, okay. Well, I am talking about not renegotiating the contract, put that at the side. That's no way. We're not talking anything about it. I am talking okay, so not the options. the contract. I am talking, sir, about the options that are available at present without touching the contract in which this country right. can rake in billions of American dollars. Why these options are not okay, well, being when, used. When we when we're done, when I finish this, I would love you to tell me some of these options outside of the ones that we've mentioned that would not run afoul of the contract. Because if you can do that, I tell you, no. you would have a major, no. major discovery here. We'll hire you as a consultant no, immediately no. if no. we could do this. I'll tell you now, approving the, these other projects without, re, without proper review of the field development plans right. that is coming with <clears throat> billions of American dollars, all it's right. one. So you're saying no, no approval of future. any other projects right. without the ones that has already been approved are properly reviewed, researched, checked, and audited. All right, so that's one. Use any other project to ensure that this country do not lose the taxes that has been given away willy-nilly to the oil company. Okay. Great. Two. The, I talk about the field development plan yes, yes. and the, the review of the field development yeah. plan. That is two. There are ring fencing provisions. That, that's that the should be. of the contract. No, 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 no. That can be, that can be reinstalled. And there are so many other other issues All right. in which All right. so I got, I, got, I got a few. So okay. I'll, I'll address those three that right. you mentioned. Thank and you. But before we do this, let me, let me get a minute of your attention to Andem Media. So I've seen a lot of writings, including in the Starbuck News recently, about this weekend. And so let's apply the formula that we know is in the contract on a cash basis to the 2021 um, financials that is just released. So the total revenue, say based on 42 lifts, right, for 2021, was about three, I'm gonna talk only in US billions, not Guyana, so that we don't confuse it, three billion US dollars. That's total, that's gross revenue for the, for the companies. So if you split that into two, cost oil, which is, will be 75%, is 2.3 billion, and profit oil will be 0 0.7 or 700 million dollars. Right, that's profit oil and cost oil. So the contractor is supposed to get 50%, and we're supposed to get 50% of that. So 360 million each US dollars. So the contractor then has to, because they are now, I can answer definitively because I've talked I've spoken to the GRA on the tax side. So because the royalty is not cost deductible, but it is GRA based on our, our laws, a GRA tax deductible, but not they don't come out of the cost bank. So the contractor has to pay the from its share the 2% royalty to the government. So the contractor ends up with 10.5% of gross revenue, and the government ends up with 14.5% of gross revenue. That is 
how it is. So what will government get in a scenario like that? The government gets 420 million US dollars in profit for 2021. This is crudely put, I'm just giving you an idea. That would be equivalent to its 14.5%. And the contractor gets, that's all combined, uh, about um, 300 million in profits. So you then add the contracted share is the 2.3 billion that goes to cost recovery. That is to pay back for, uh, for the capital and to, to the operating costs, that's expenses. So the contractor's profit is 300 million and the government gets 420 million in 2021. So that was it. So when I saw figures that the contractor was getting four times more than that of the government, what their people are doing, they're adding back, they're adding also the cost recovery to the profit of the contractor and then dividing it. And so this is, I see this, uh, and even some technical people are making that mistake. This is on a cash basis. Now, the accrual is a different matter, but you analyze a business on cash flow. This is cash flow every year. This is what the contractors take of profit in cash flow for 2021 was around 300, and the government was 420 million. So that sort of, of thing. So let me come to the issue. I just wanted to clarify that issue. You get a chance. You get a chance. I'm not going anywhere. No, I'm just telling you I did not ask anything. No, but, but that's been in the newspapers, written about every day. It's all in your newspaper. Sorry, it's sir. in the Starbuck News. So I just wanted to make sure that that perspective comes over because when people see that, it excites them because they then think that the contractor profit the contractor's profit is four times that of the government. And what they include in that, the 75% or going to cost recovery. And that is sometimes, it makes people get angry, angry. Now, your point about the approval. At the last press conference, I sought to address some of these issues. You may not agree, we may not have an agreement. I spoke about why, so if we start ring fencing now, right, we will run afoul if we would have to have an amendment to ring fence. But you can achieve the same objective, you can achieve the same objective by not approving new projects. So you effectively, you kill the investment pipeline for the future. You say, we're not approving any new investment, so we will cap our production at 800,000 barrels per day, which is what the four projects have been approved for. So if you do that, you can, you effectively ring fencing against future expenditure um, but you can't do it against exploration because they would still spend on the exploration side, but, but less on the, the development. Right your, no, I'm, I'm coming to it. You've got to give me a chance to explain to. So that is what I'm trying to do. So you can do it there. But is that the best decision for this country? Is that the best decision? Yeah, and, no, no, no. I'm, it's a rhetorical Did question. Ask, yeah, no, no, no. It's not you. I'm, I'm posing a yes, question rhetorically. Yes, rhetorically. It is. Yes, it is. So you're. 100%. You know, now, I do not believe that for the following reasons. I think if we, we do that now, at this stage, you cap not only the future growth of oil and gas production, which in the long run can be more lucrative to the country, much, much more lucrative. But you also, by, you will kill the momentum in, this, in the industry, the local industry, that will service the oil and gas sector. Because you run out on a project pipeline side. That's the second, second, that's the first thing. Secondly, secondly, even if you get more 
a bit more money up front as a result of this because you're capping expenditure, then you, you just save the money. I explained this at, at Nordjum the last time we came here. You can save it, you have to save it for the future. We believe that investing it in is a better way. So this, this whole idea, we have discussed it already. No, you sir. just don't agree with it. No, sir. You have been, this, this nation, I like to stand up. All right. This entire nation have the worst contract on earth. And every loophole we see or we have at this uh, at, at all, at disposable in which we can use to garner money in our pockets, ring fencing, such an important issue. We are just just throw that on at the waist. No, we're right? not showing it at the waist. Without That's a fallacy, Glenn. I just this, explained to you. This is where we, this country is losing right. billions of U.S. dollars, my friend. All right. Okay. This. It's billions of U.S. dollars this nation is losing on that lack of that one provision. Yeah. Okay. Are we? You? Let's let's. All right. Ask. Again, I give you a chance to perform when I come on the tele. When I come on your um. I talk about the, the field development plans, yes, the reviews, right. and the, the taxes. Yes. So uh, again, on this very same issues, they are all interlinked. That because that is what your you're effectively killing the project pipeline that by not moving forward. So then how this country is going to eke out anything? If we have, if it's clear to us, Mr. Vice President, that this is available for us to get money through these projects and it's not being used, then how is the nation I, I going to get money? No, but that's, that's precisely. So we're getting a share of the profit oil and the royalty at this stage, and we said that from the other projects, the local content, from the gas to energy, this is where we're getting value for Guyana. It's not just revenue to the state, it is value for the country. Mr. And Mr. so- Daniel, You're talking about all right, dollars all right. when we are losing billions of- But dollars. that is why I just That's saw- it. Yes, I, I saw that perspective, and that is why I started with an explanation of the cash on a cash flow basis, how much comes to the two parties in profit, pure profit. Because there is this view that when, when you portray it as Exxon on profit, that they make the rake in four times more profit than the, the government. Anyhow, Dennis, yes. Oh, Mr. Vice President, there is more than Sir, could you clarify why is it that according to the vice news feature you made a point that still your friend he gets all the support um still deals with all the agreements i'm in government so i uh assist from the government side that's one question the second one will the state be asking that the charges against uh the lower the fee that i be dropped to make way for the commission of inquiry Oh, the state is not, as far as I know, is not going to ask that the charges against low and field be dropped. I, um, we, there's no such intention that I know of. So that's one. And on the other matter, would you prefer me to lie and say he's not my friend? I've, I've known this guy, uh, and like I know a lot of people in this country, I spoke exactly the truth then and in the interview. I said, that is so. Being friends with me doesn't mean that you can abuse the friendship. And that's what he had done now that I've seen this, the, the, the interview and what he said outside of the meeting. Even his attempt to say, you know, the guy is clean and then went off into something else. Now. This was, as I explained to you, Dennis, this was a, record, a secret recording, and it was not all contiguous. I don't think they were all contiguous, but throughout it all, that's why I'm giving you the context, throughout it all, they were trying to, in 15 to 20 minutes, trying to get me 
to say I would be involved in his business, that is Sue's business, to build a hotel and a, and, and a casino, and that they, uh, with the investor. And I said, no, throw that. You saw that. I don't want to be involved. And I do assist. If, if for example, that is why every one of those hotels, all 12 of the MOUs and the 18, that we met with every one of those investors. Every one of them, there, there was a committee that was set up that met with everybody, the entire group of people, all 18 of them. This is not anything unusual. I saw one reporter said, oh, investment is not Jack Dale's portfolio. Well, what do you think we're doing for, to get jobs? One Jack Dale portfolio, what do you think? I'm sterile here. And, and a lot of people were saying, oh, it's some minister thing. Let, let me tell you my, the mere fact that we had to set up at the office of the president a unit to follow up on promises made to people and to resolve issues that people face across this country. We have already had on the outreaches over 5,000. I will intervene on a daily basis. The president does so everyone to, on NIS. NIS might now be my portfolio. On uh, people who having a whole range of other issues, public assistance. Public assistance is now my portfolio. When I go out there, I'll, I'll make sure that people were treated unfairly in some other matter. Maybe if they have a housing application, we'd follow up. And that is from the office of the president, from a unit that we set up. That would be seen an, as intervention in the portfolios of other people. If a businessman come and say, I've had my thing at Go Invest for ages, I'm creating 50 jobs, and I can't get the, detail, the project through. We'll find out and we'll push it along. It doesn't mean anything illegal is done or for payment. That is how we operate. The PEP is not a dodo sort of government, an aloof like the Granger government, doing one meeting for a, a month. Every day we're on the road meeting people, going through, going through solving issues all the time. That's how we operate. So in that process, will people capitalize on it? Yes, there may be a few, but do we stop giving access to people because a few corrupt and unscrupulous people try to rip off others? The answer is no. Yes, um, yes, Marcia. Marcia, Thomas, from the start of you. A follow up to the very question. And I have two others. On the same, um, on the same. So is my friend, and he will get all the support statement. Um, there is a perception that you have to be your friend to get that support. With you saying that Sue is my friend, and he will get all the support. Yeah. Does that mean if I am not your friend, I'm not going to get the support? That's one. Okay. Um, two. I need clarity on the um, the hotel investments that you said. Because as far as my recollection go, I think it's four casinos per region. Then, and most of the hotels are being built in region four. Yeah. There was only one outstanding so, so, yeah. um, casino license. Given that Marriott already has one. No, there are three. There are three, not four. So the, all of the other MOUs that we have, we now have to amend the law. the law to do that. So there are only three, not four, okay. in this three. region. Three, three, and so everyone else. But the eligibility criteria remain the same. This eligibility criteria, and on that issue, friendship. I said this guy brought somebody over to me basically as a friend. But if you ask everyone else who has been building hotels whether their agreement will be different than Sue or their MOU. It's the same MOU. It's exactly the same MOU. So that is why I made it clear um, that there is nothing special because they came to see me on a hotel and casino. Every, we went through a public process and the MOU for everyone is exactly the same MOU and you can verify that with, with Go Invest. And um, my other question was, so 
brought this person to your home. He is your neighbor. Is that the first time that Sue has brought someone into your home? A no, business uh, person? No. And yeah. that's one. Uh -huh. And from that little bit on vice, um, the entire conversation seemed to have been in English, except for the part with, with the bride. When they broke out in Mandarin, didn't you think it odd? And given that it's impolite to speak in another language, shouldn't you have objected and said, like, we're really going on here, we are saying, or something like that? No. The thing is that I don't think that was the only time that they spoke in Mandarin. I don't think that was the only time. And I didn't know if it was Mandarin or Cantonese or whatever they were talking. But frankly speaking, it was an afternoon and I was tired, so I didn't care too much what they were speaking. What I understood is this is he was trying all along, and I was very, very clear about that. So you don't, this is not like we were, it was a stage managed thing, as you saw. You know, so. If they were, that is why I'm saying, if they wanted to really catch me, the guy knew English. The one, right? He was all he had to say, not to whisper in Mandarin to Sue, it was to say to me, We have a bribe for you. Or you wouldn't have to call it a bribe. Some money for you. And then they had the camera there. And had I taken it, that would have been the catch you moment. Why would you have to tell Sue this? And then Sue saying, oh, don't worry, I'm going to collect it. And when you come out, Sue says, he's clean. I'll wait for bigger, bigger things to give him some money. OK? And you had to know you were being duped. When the guy said, I want to know that he's actually getting this stuff. And Sue said, no, no, no. So that is, that is why I feel so vindicated by the whole thing. In fact, it proved in my most vulnerable moment when I was, was not, I didn't know I was being recorded, that you couldn't find me taking a bribe from a person who is in my home. Okay? You didn't answer the first question. The, what? Is it the first time that Oh, no, um, I'm trying to think, and I don't think many people at home, but he has set up meetings with other, other people for me. And, uh, yeah. Lastly, clarity on um, something you said about the, the investigation, um, that it would be kind of a waste of time. I don't know if that's for the name. No, because, because for me, I think people, if he has done this to people and collected money from them, no, that... Uh, no, 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 not that. For, for an investigation of you. Like oh, okay, but that's an opposition thing. Yes, that's how they, they would... Whether even before this, they were calling for that. That's nothing new. It's that's not nothing gonna new. That's not, gonna, that's not going to on allegations on the basis of allegations. If we had to do that on the basis of allegations, I can say that when Norton is by Bam Bam Ali, people give him stuff too there. They taught me a lot of stuff. I don't want to deal with that. Norton. Whether the Commissioners will be coming, the uh, Commission of Inquiry members, the panel, um, where they'll be drawn from locally over the Oh, I, I think before the end of the day, in an hour, hour's time, you'll see that. That is going to be announced. Yeah, let me go across here first, then I come. Yes, please. Can you define it, Diana? Um, you mentioned that some opposition persons have reached out to you um, to get the interview with us. Were you aware that Vice News was in Guyana for several weeks and had visited several communities where they met with prominent opposition figures? Um, and the second question is, the reporter referred to you during the interview as the most powerful politician in Guyana. Mm -hmm. Do you think that you were deliberately set out, they deliberately set out to target you? So the first one is, yes, um, I, I discovered subsequently that they had visited some places. I think they went to Surama. And, and I don't want to speak uh, much about who, who the people are, because it could be that they, are, they were also fooled by vice. But there were some opposition people. And clearly, they had that angle to it 
but I thought they were more interested in the geopolitical stuff. And obviously they got from the others, you know, well, Jack Dio, Jack Dio. Um, I think also that they try to target people who have some significance. So Norton probably would have never even been targeted for a sting operation. <laughs> so um, uh, that, on the last question that you raised about, they try to look around for people who would, I think have something. So they wouldn't have even targeted Norton for a sting operation. Because, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I saw, yeah. Um, how soon do you anticipate the law to be amended? I, I don't know. I don't. I don't know because none of the hotels have been built as yet. None of the hotels, but they are all um, eligible. Okay. Sir, can we just touch back on? Actually, on that may have been when the constitution thing. Remember, they asked me that the constitution would be changed or something like yeah. that. In the initial interview, that might have been the, constitu the Constitution of Guyana, but that didn't come up, yes, the Constitution of Guyana, yeah, to make him president. Sir, yeah. the press conference. Yes. The oil press conference. Oh, you want me to deal with one on that? Special, yes, sir. A special one on that? Why don't we do uh, another sit-down and an interview with you? Well, we don't have no problem. Right, yes, yes. I would appreciate a, a full press conference in which you can have the whole country. No, just on, on all the press. But that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> they prefer, yes. Sir, they, we, sir, right. I, no, 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 no. But listen, but we back. will, we, let me, no, no. But listen, we have a duty to, to give answers. We, you're not going to all the time agree with the answers. But not because you don't agree, you don't appreciate that we have a different perspective. If we agree to that kind of conversation, we'd always be open and give you explanations. You know, might not. I have no problem. With well, that is what we'll do. We will give access and we will, we will share our perspective. But back to the question I asked: the field development plan and the field development reviews, which, yeah. which you said. You said in Lisa 1 and 2, the $9 billion that a coalition government agreed, signed off, and did not verify or audit. You would have never done that, your government. There you go with the Payara, another $9 billion. You went ahead with the yellow tail, another $9 billion. Oh, one second, one second, one second. Okay. I'm not going to yeah. correct me. Uh, at the end oh. of the day. Now, these are monies. Your own words says that Diana is not equipped, does not have the qualified auditors to verify and to audit these figures. But the field development plan is separate from the auditing of expenditure. Yes. So we are auditing now, we are in the process of auditing the expenditure. Yes. Right? But it is uh, exposed. It's not it's not before it's made. That is how it goes. So the expenditure is made, and then it's audited for um, veracity. And so that is happening now. The field development plan often is reviewed when you do the licensing. And so they will get, they have to submit the field development plan, and you review that as part of the licensing regime. And then as they roll out the construction and the implementation, there is a reporting relationship. So as far as I know, these have been done as part of the licensing, right? The field development plan. And then the cost is a separate matter. The cost audits are done separately. I did not get to finish my question. All right. <laughs> I was asking about the Lisa 1, Lisa 2, Payara, and the Yellow Tail. Yes, sir. The cost and the, the, the review, the yeah. auditing. The audit. auditing is going on now. So I said the last time, Glenn, when you were here, I said there was four months was given. One of your reporters, I I'm think, not asked. asking that. And, oh, I understand. I'm not that, and I thought I it saying, might be true. I'm saying that we have almost... 30 something billion American dollars. Almost 10 years of this. 30 billion. 30 billion. This year's budget. This country's budget. 
and we haven't we no, no, no. We several have times our budget. Yeah. Several yeah. times our budget. I'm helping you along. Ten yes. times. Right, ten yeah, times. much more. Ten yeah, much I more. Said yeah. Ten times. I said ten times. And here we are. We are not even close to understanding that type of money in which, and I'm gonna you quote you back, in which 75% of that is being taken off as cost oil before Diana gets its share of profit. Is the couple of different concepts that you're stringing together that are unrelated. And that is why I'm having a difficulty. I can answer them separately, but the three concepts you've just put together that are totally unrated, uh, unrelated and not connected. So field development plan is one thing and total cost. So when you do that, then they go, they build an FPS, so assuming it's $10 billion. Then you have to audit that to see whether the $10 billion were act actually went to the project. Precise. So that's two. Then thirdly, you have to take, you, you have to recover the money you spent on the cost. Right. So up to 75% of the income goes towards paying back those costs, say the 10 billion, 25% is remain, remaining to be distributed. So we are, the field development plans are often done at the time of licensing and they're perfected a little bit later on as you go on. Then the audits are done after the FPSO is built, right? And then, and then we, we pay back for it. So what? Those are the three concepts, the three things. These are these are money that Guyana will never see, maybe in a lifetime. Thirty billion American dollars. But this it's not, not our money. Pay. It's not our money. Yes, sir. It's our money. No, but if so they invest, the all right. Okay. These people are be, are making yeah. are making that you said seventy five percent is coming out on a daily basis, plus cost oil. So how is that our money? No, but Glenn, you get the thirty billion, and we, and then we will, we will, um, you will make all this money too. Oh no, I'm not asking about that, sir. Don't do me that. I'm not asking about that. All I'm asking is that these people are in are spending this money here, and we, the owners of this 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 resources, are not verifying these funds. That are being spent. No, but that's what I just told you. The audits are taking place. That's the verification. But you, on the other hand, you're, you're telling this nation that you, you were disappointed that we didn't have or we don't have people to verify or audit these things. No, right? but that's why we're building. We, that is why we are building capacity of our own. We have a foreign group working along with a local consortium to do this. We have to build capacity May to... I ask one last question? And then one last question. question, one last question, yeah. We are in a 50-50 business. Um, and you just talk about that, profit, yeah, yeah. How, how it's being shared. Who's monitoring these expenses? Who is monitoring these expenses on behalf of all of us here, the entire guy in this population? We're a 50-50 business, not from a management perspective. So CINOC, let me, let me just, yeah, so you have a different view. So CINOC is an investor. Um, the HES is an investor. Exxon is an investor. The three of them own the consortium. So then they hire an operator, which is a management form. So even Sinoak, who has 25% shares and has 35% shares, they don't make in, um, management decisions. They don't make management decisions. And they own the 100% of this venture. They own 100% of it. Is Guyana a we are, we, partnership? no, 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 we get 50% of the profit, but we are not 50% of the owners of the company. We, the company is owned 100% by the, 
by these three entities that I just explained. We get 50% of the profit. So Our, it's... We only get 50% profit of something All that right. we okay. owe. Yeah, but, but you got my owe. answer there, right, yeah. That no, we, we don't, we don't, so we, we it's like, it's us. It's just like a bauxite company. Say, say a company that comes in to do bauxite, or anything for that matter. They come to Guyana, they invest, they own 100%. Right? They own 100%. They then, um, they then have to pay the tax at the end of the year. So they pay a 28% corporate tax. After they, they make their gross profit, they pay 28% tax, and then the rest goes as net profit to them. But they own 100%. So these people come in the oil and gas sector. They own one, 100%. They're, they're now, the pro, there is a formula which says that on your profit, you, are, you have to give us 50% and you take 50% of the profit. So how do one determine profit if you don't have a say in a business? But, but how do you, if we don't have a say in a private business, how do we determine profit? The GRA every year looks at this. Now remember, there, is, there are two audits. The GRA has an audit where they can audit for the things that, for, for that purpose that you're talking about. Then there is a separate audit by the, which is determined by the PSC which is the audit we are doing now. So GRA still has to do its audit, or the one that you are talking about, to determine profitability. So Let that- Make it a little more simple, sir. Oh. I'm done. F Exxon, Exxon, Exxon bring an FPS over and give Guyana a bill for a billion American dollars when they spend 300 million. They hand us a bill and put and says a billion dollar cost for this, this program. Isn't that shortening over shit? Yeah, but why? Well, that's my question. Yeah. Who, is, who is authorizing well, and who is okay? No, but, but that is it now. So that is the ex post audit. So assuming they claim in the books $100 billion or a billion dollars, but only spend $700 million or inflate the price, the industry average is only 700 million for this piece of equipment that they claim to be a billion dollars. Then the government in the audit, determined by the PSA, can flag that transaction and we can investigate the transaction. And should we find that this transaction here doesn't meet industry standard, then they can't claim that. They can't claim it. Supply so that. So then that an additional 300 million, assuming it's true, then the 300 million goes then to profit oil for the redistribution. So all right, all right. So, so we'll continue this conversation okay. elsewhere. Um, right. Sir, just finally. Oh. Is anyone a Susie, right? Like Susie. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But, um, I understand that point. But another thing, do you think that you, you so in, but you also said that you feel vindicated based on how things played out. So, how exactly? Vindicated from my end that that you had people in my most on uh, an international news outfit that has gone around the world, um, trying, working hard to compromise me by putting in their person in my house and everything, and being unable to do so. So I feel vindicated by that in my most unguarded moment, this and the country saw that. But Sue said that he never said anything about giving bribe to anyone. That is in his statement. Now I've seen things that he said, oh, he has to share money with somebody. I don't know if... Okay, all right. No, no, but that's what I'm, I'm going to assume. What I wanted to know is usually in these, in suing someone, so you have to prove that you took a hit in some way, you, 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 you're, you're political. Oh, so, oh, so you, you uh, your point your is I'm mitigating already by saying I'm vindicated? Do you think your reputation took a hit by this? Well, I think, in, yeah, yeah. So now that you're saying that for, for the 
lawsuit purposes, yes, my reputation took a hit globally. But globally, globally, right? But not they're not Guyanese, so they may not know. And this could be like really major because it's international. This could be really big. Based on what she said, as a government, um, how do you intend to mitigate, given Showtime's audience, where the episode is here? Um, well, it's easier to convince uh, the general public that somebody's guilty of something than a judicial tribunal. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of Americans, including investors over here watching this, yeah. and a lot of them probably believe that you took, you take rights. Yeah. Yeah. How does the U.S. government mitigate yeah. against that? You work for oil now, right? You ask any of the oil companies whether they will they view that seriously. <coughs> you ask any of the oil companies because people saw it. They know the reputation of this entity and the fact is that they saw what happened. They've been unable to prove anything of this sort. And, and, and people said, oh, I remember another point about being crude. Norton said I'm crude when I said people come here to make money. I think even the Starbuck editorial the reporter said to me from Vice, of recent you've been attracting a lot of investors to Guyana. And what do you think Guyana has to offer? Why, why do investors come to a country? It is because of the opportunities to make money. It's just blunt. It's blunt. Norton said it's crude. Imagine Norton talking about crudity. But the thing is that it's a blunt. That's where I am. That's why they're here. All of these oil and gas companies, they're tripping over each other to come here and everyone else to come to our country. And, and they have seen now an attempt, a dedicated attempt to basically frame someone. And it didn't work. And it didn't work. Our systems are, yeah. Should the public fear now that because you might be a little cagey based on what happened that you now you might want to have a different approach? I, I think I have to analyze this that maybe I'd have to be a bit more cautious, but then that changes exactly who this who I've been. Helping people every walk of life. And anytime they have some issue in government, not because I want money from them, because I want to see things uh, succeed, more jobs created, etc. And so that open door policy, I have to review it or put in place some other, it's very difficult to know what people say before they come to your office. Because they may, you, know, you may think innocently they set up a meeting and ask you to set up someone and they have an agreement with the person or take money from them. That, that's, it's very hard to, to do this sort of thing. So I don't know. Um, it could change, yes. I, I have to think about it, seriously. Okay, just one more on the oil contract. Uh, you have said that you think that it could have been better. Um, Mr. Law believes it's the worst contract on earth. So you differ on that. Just now you explained very clearly uh, that based on the lips that came in for 2021, Guyana actually profited more than ExxonMobil and the entire consortium combined. Is this a, a, an evolution of your view recently on the contract? No, it's not an evolution of the view. And um, it could be. I think it's lopsided. I share the same view as Mr. Lal and the others. I, I believe it's lopsided. And I don't, it's just that we differ on how to address this lopsidedness and the pace and when. And we've said we want to do it in any future agreement with a new standard PSA that will address all the issues that he pointed out and his newspaper has been pointed out correctly, that all of those issues. But well, why not this one? <laughs> all right, all right, you're not. And so, and so I don't <laughs> believe that we differ on that. It's just that we share that. But I also have a duty when there is a, a wrong position in the newspapers 
to point out to the people of this country when they are being misled, like somebody saying that Exxon is raking in on a cash basis four times that of the government in 2021. And that's misleading. And that's misleading. That is misleading, and it, it's designed to excite people and to say basically, oh, um, the government is not doing a good job. It's not, it is not true. But that doesn't mean that the contract is not lopsided. But it is that is factually misleading. Factually misleading. And I saw it in several places among the, some analysts and everyone else. All of these analysts and local people, and it's, it's, it's all over the place. And I, it's mentioned in Starbuck News, Kaichur News, everywhere else. And you have figures to... to, to yeah, to yes, and I just, I just told you how applying the formula. It's not about a tool, it's about figures and yeah, Yes, 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 I, I, I have, I facts, have, right? I have that. And when I come on the program, we you can know, go through and get greater detail. So that is what, so th that is how I say it. I'm not here to defend, Exxon has to defend itself. I'm here to defend the interests of the people of this country. And we just differ on what, how to pursue that interest. I have a different view that getting more investments now, getting Exxon to make more investments now with this window of opportunity we have, and faster investments can best serve our nation in the long run. Some people believe, no, we should slow it down so that we can get more money faster, and, but it, in the long run, I think that will harm us. That's, that's where our perspective is. Thank you very much.